Hi everyone and welcome to this new video about steady state analysis. We continue with our design examples and this is our second example about a RLC circuit design. In this design we will consider a series RLC circuit as shown here and we will like to have the following situation. Design this circuit to produce the output voltage V out which is shown here 4.456 which is the amplitude of the output voltage cosine with this frequency, rating frequency and this save phase when provided with the input voltage of V in with the amplitude of 10 and a cosine exact same frequency but different phase and we need to use the value for R as 10 kilo ohms so this is 10 kilo ohms okay what do we do first before we dive into the calculations and analysis and determining the components because this is a design example so we need to know all of them of course one of the unknowns are given so it is actually R but the capacitor and the inductor must be calculated. So this is actually our objective. First, we start with the transfer function of this uh, circuit. So the transfer function, and I will do the transfer function again in the Laplace domain, the S domain. So the transfer function is our starting point. From the transfer function, we can determine the, uh, the gain expression and also the expression for phase. So how do we start with the transfer function? The transfer function means actually how do you how much do you transfer from the input to the output? Which means actually what is the voltage from the input to the output in ratio? So V out divided by V in. So if I now write down the Laplace transform of that as V out divided by V in, and I have just denoted H of S as a transfer, that is just the name for the transfer function in this case, then we have actually a voltage divider uh, rule again here because this voltage V out divided by V in is exactly the same as the impedance seen by the V out which is between these two nodes divided by the total impedance seen between the two nodes of the input voltage. So I can say it is the reactance of the inductor only which is of course in Laplace domain S times L divided by the total impedance seen by the input voltage. V, which is R plus 1 over SC, which is the reactance of the capacitor plus the reactance of the inductor. If I now simplify this by multiplying the denominator and numerator by S times C, it will be S squared L times C will be S squared LC plus R times CS plus 1. Okay, this is actually the expression in Laplace domain. I will now convert this. So I will convert this using the S is equal to J omega because I can use this in steady state analysis. Then I have the following expression in J omega domain that will be following. H J omega will be equal to minus omega squared because S squared means J omega times J omega and J times J minus is equal to minus 1 so we have the minus omega squared times L of C and it will be 1 minus omega squared times LC which is actually this one minus actually this expression so there's actually these two expressions uh, will make the complete real part and plus the imaginary will, will be J omega R C that's actually our uh, expression for the transfer function from this I will have the gain expression so this will give me the gain and also the phase so these two uh, parameters are also important because I have in the expression in the time domain I have the phase and also the gain because the phase if you look at the expression the phase of the input voltage is 10 degrees and the phase of the output voltage is 170.5 so if I now write down the phase difference output minus input which will be phase will be at specific frequency is 17,000 pi will be 117.5 divided by a minus I mean 10 will be 160.5 degrees that's actually the effective phase and for the gain I have actually the output peak voltage which is 4.456 divided by 10 which is 0. 4456 and these are actually the required parameters 
And I will now set up the equations for the gain and also for the phase using the transfer function. I will use these values evaluated at this frequency. So I can also write down what do I have here. So it is actually at omega will be 17 times 10 to the power 3 pi in radians per second. Okay, I will now move to the phase. So what, and again, so what is the gain? Let's first start with the gain. What is the expression for the gain? The gain is the absolute value of h, j omega, will be the omega squared times lc, which is just the real part, divided by the square root of the real part squared and the imaginary part squared. And for the phase, I have the following. I have the phi, which is in terms of omega, which will be, if you look at the expression very carefully, this one will contribute 180 degrees or minus 180 degrees, because it is pointing now in the minus uh, x direction or in the minus real direction. So it will be minus 80 or plus 80 degrees, which you prefer. So it will be minus 180 degrees. Minus, again, because you have the subtraction of this part. And for this part, I will do the arc tangent of the imaginary divided by the real part, what we always do. So it is arc tangent will be imaginary part divided by the real part. There is a note here because we need to be careful if this term is real, if this term is uh, positive or negative. If this is positive, I can use this. This expression. But if this is negative, I have to add here 180 degrees or subtract 180 degrees. It's exactly the same uh, situation for the complex plane. So I assume now in this case that this is positive. So my real part is positive. So I can use this. We have to check this, of course, afterwards. Otherwise, it will be uh, we will get different uh, results. Okay. So what do I do? Uh, do next? I will substitute this value, omega, uh, 17,000 pi radians per second, and also the value of the resistor because it's 10 kilo ohms. And I will now evaluate these two given uh, expressions for gain in the phase. So I will use, so let me write it down, use r is equal to 10 to the power 4 ohms, and omega is 17 times 10 to the power 3 pi radians per second in both equations. Okay, I will start with the uh, with the gain again, so we'll be have the following. So it'll be 17 times 10 to the power 3 pi in absolute form must be equal to 0 0.4456. That's actually expression. I will now use this expression, so substitute it in there. So what do I have? I have Omega squared will be 17,000, so I will make it like this. Squared times just L times C, divided by the square root will be 1 minus, again, 17,000 pi squared, L times C, and this term completely squared. And then omega will be 17,000 times 10 to the power 4, which is, of course, the R, and times C, which we don't know yet. And it is equal to 0 0.4456. That's actually for this expression. And this is actually our first equation. So we can say this is number 1. If I now move also to the phase expression, so I will also make this phase. So what do I have for phase? Let me write down also the phase. So the phase will be... So let me make this clear. So this is minus 180 degrees, minus arc tangent, and we have the omega, which is 17,000 pi times 10 to the power 4 times c divided by 1 minus omega is 17,000 pi. And times LC. And this will be equal to this phase, which will be 160.5 degrees. Now, this is our equation number two, actually. So 
So we have now two equations using the phase and the gain formulas. So what do we do next? Now we can rewrite this or this. It doesn't matter where you start. I will a little bit zoom out so you can see everything in one one uh, one screen. So this is actually this. So if I now rewrite this, that's actually what I want to do, and express L times C in terms of the rest of the parameters. Then, well, then I will have actually an expression in terms of only C. Then I will substitute that expression, that will be another expression, in this, and it will be a LC here substituted and also here. And I will new, have a new expression. I will then solve that, and it will give me the capacitor value. If I know the capacitor value, then I can calculate the inductor because then I have only one unknown left. So if I now let me zoom in again, and move on here. What do I do? What are, what are the steps? So I will have actually transformed this to the right side. So it will be plus 180 degrees. And then I will also do times minus 1. And I will take the tangent of the left and the right side. So I do three steps at once. So I will have the following. So we have the 17,000 pi times 10 to the power 4. Which is actually, that can be also written in this form. So it will be 17 times 10 to the power 7, which will be also exactly the same, times C, divided by 1 minus 17,000 pi squared times LC, and it will be tangent of what I just said was 160.5 plus the 180, I will replace it to the right side, and I will do, of course, times minus 1, so I will get rid of this minus and I will take a tangent. This is actually what's shown here. So if you do that, you will get minus 300. You will get minus 340.5. Okay, that's actually what it is. And if you do the math here for just tangent, you will get 0.354. Or if you want a more accurate, you place a 1 at the end also. So this is actually what the expression is for the this one. If I now rewrite this, I can do the following. I have one minus, and I can also rewrite this just to make it uh, to make the expression more easier. So I will have 289 times 10 to the power 6 times pi squared LC, which will be 17 times 10 to the power 7 pi times C divided by the tangent of minus 340 degrees, 340.5 degrees. Okay, that's actually what for this expression is. And if you now do the math here again, and you will have an expression which is very close to this one, 1 1.508 times 10 to the power 9c. So what do I do next? I will place this term from the right side to the left side, and I will place this term, which is actually the expression with the LC inside in it. I will place it to the left, and I will swap the uh, expression. I will have the following: 389 times 200. I mean, 289 times 10 to the power 6 pi squared LC will be equal to 1 minus 1.508 times. 10 to the power 9c. Now I'm actually very close. Now I have to do L of c is equal to 1 minus 1 1.508 times 10 to the power 9c divided by the expression for the factor. So that will be 289.10 to the power 6 pi squared. You can simplify this further. So you, go, you will get rid of this fraction. It will mean it will become 3.8. 506 times 10 to the power minus 10 minus 0.5288c. So how do I do this? You do one minus one divided by this term, and also 1.508 times 10 to the power 9 divided by the exactly same term, you will get actually these two numbers. And so the, the c is just a parameter that will be of course placed at the end. Okay, this is actually our equation number three, and I will use this equation. So I will substitute equation number three in equation number one, because I can now, where, where do I see LC? I can re replace it with this expression. Why do I need to do that? 
Why, why should I do that? Because I have now an expression only in C. And if I do that here in LC and LC there, then the expression, the equation number one here for gain will be only in terms of C, and I can solve it. So that's actually for the next step. So substitution, so substitute, so substitute three, equation number three in one. What do I get? I get the following, 17,000 pi squared times, which is the expression what we had for the LC, which is 3.506 times 10 to the power minus 10 minus 0 0.5288C divided by, and now the square root will be a very long expression, will be 1 minus 17,000 pi squared, and LC will be this expression again, so 3.506 times 10 to the power minus 10 minus 0.5288C, and the whole quantity, of course, squared, and then plus 17,000 pi times 10 to the power 4, or you can also rewrite this exactly the same as 17 times 10 to the power 7 pi, it's also the same, so it doesn't matter, times c, whole quantity squared, and this must be equal to 0 0.4456. So, we are actually at the point that we see an expression only in terms of c, and you can solve this, you will get a quadratic equation in terms of c only, and uh, you can solve it using a solver, or you can also do it by hand. I won't do that here because it will take a lot of time, so I will just say solving will give you c is equal to very close to 4.50 times 10 to the power minus 10 in farads, of course. And if you do that in if you convert this to picofarads, it will be 450 picofarads. Now, actually, I'm done with one of the nodes. The next step is actually the inductor. How can I calculate the inductor? Now, look at this equation. This equation has the inductor in it. So, if I know the L, I mean the C, I know that now. I can now substitute the C here and C there, and I can now calculate L. So, if I now do that next, then next step will be L expressed actually rewriting this. So if I now rewrite this, L will be equal to 1 minus 1.508 times 10 to the power minus 9, uh, plus 9 I mean, excuse me, plus 9, C divided by, and I will divide the term by C, it will be 289 times 10 to the power 6 pi squared times C. You substitute the value for C here, I will do that also step by step, so it will be this and this expression for the, the value for the capacitor was 450 times 10 to the power minus 12, which is pico, divided by 289 times 10 to the power 6 pi squared times 450 times 10 to the power minus 12. If you do the math here also very carefully, you will get very close to 0 0.25 or 0 0.250 actually in Henry's. If you want to do if you want to express it in millihenries, you will get 250 millihenries. And that's actually the whole business for this design. You have the capacitor and you have the inductor. I will summarize. So we have the, I will a little bit zoom in, zoom out. Which is what you see is actually the following. You will see that we start with a transfer function. You will express the transfer function in Laplace domain first, and then you will move to the J omega domain. You will have an expression for a gain in a phase. You will use the data which is shown here for the input and output voltage. And then you move on. You will set up two equations with two unknowns, as you can see, because we have LC, LC, we have two unknowns. Then we have to rewrite one of the equations. I will always do the phase in this case because it is easier than this expression. It depends on what you actually have in the specific uh, question. So I will then express and I will have a new uh, equation I will substitute that here and then rewrite everything so that I have only one 
unknown in the expression then i have the c now once i have the c i can of course move with this equation again and calculate the l so in summary in summary i have i will that in in, in red so in summary what well, we have is the following the r was given so let me write it down for completeness so r was given the c was now also calculated this is 450 picofarads and the l is 250 millihenries and the design is completed